everybody. Uh, so, in this module, we will actually start seeing uh, some of the basic uh, commands that we need to start getting familiar uh, when you are operating on a Linux uh, uh, system. So, the first command uh, that we will look at is uh, what is called as a CD. CD basically stands for the change directory. Um, so, as in the previous module where we were talking about uh, the entire file system hierarchy, uh, file system will be typically consisting of one or more directories and each directory in turn will recursively contain uh, typically more number of subdirectories and files uh, inside that. Uh, so, if you want to basically change uh, from one position, uh, from one location of the file system into another location, CD is a directory that we actually try to, uh, 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 CD is a command that we actually try to make use of to go to another directory location. So, we specify CD followed by the directory name and suppose uh, if we want to only go to the, uh, the home directory, we specify it as uh, uh, just CD without any argument and then PWD command will basically tell us uh, uh, what is the current directory location that we are in starting from the root of the file system. So, let us see very quickly how uh, these uh, are actually working. So, let us say that I have a directory called uh, uh, example in my uh, uh, home directory. Uh, so, if I want to basically change to this directory, I specify uh, cd uh, example and then um, I, I am basically in that location uh, currently. So, here if I want to see what is my current directory location, I uh, use the command pwd uh, because of which uh, uh, it displays me what is the current directory location uh, that this particular shell process is currently in. So, it displays the current directory uh, in which the shell is uh, 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 present and uh, any command or that I am going to run, any file that I am going to access, uh, if the file name has been given with the relative path, it is always going to be considered as it being available in this particular location that is uh, uh, shown here. So, that is how you would typically uh, use the cd and the pwd commands for navigating uh, between the different directories of your file system. So, the next uh, uh, simple command that we need to understand is uh, what is called as the cp command. So, the cp command basically talks about copying a file from one name to another name or from one directory location to a totally different target uh, directory location. right? So, it basically takes two arguments. Uh, the first argument the cp command should be the source file, uh, whatever file you want to copy and then the second argument to the command should be the target file, whatever is the name of the file that you want to copy it to. So, the contents of the source file, uh, whatever you have given as the first argument will now be available to you as the contents of the target file name. So, other way of actually using the same cp command is uh, if I have multiple files to be copied into uh, a single directory location, I could specify all the files that I want to copy, uh, how many ever files are there and have the directory as my last argument. So, whatever files have been specified as arguments to the cp command initially, all those files will be copied into the directory argument that, uh, that is given as the last argument to the cp command. So, one option uh, that you have to the cp command is minus i, the minus i, i actually stands here for interactive. So, in this particular scenario, the user will be asked for a confirmation uh, if the target file name is actually already present. So, if I say copy minus i uh, followed by the source file and the target file and let us assume that the target file name is already present in the location where it is being attempted to be copied. Uh, because of the fact that the minus i option has been used, the, the user will be asked for a confirmation on whether uh, they really want to overwrite the target file uh, and sort of replace the existing contents of it, right. Because uh, if the target file is overwritten and if it is already existing, uh, then we would actually end up losing the contents of the target file. So, the minus i option is basically a sort of an additional confirmation that the system is actually trying to get from the user on whether they really prefer overriding the contents of whatever has been given as a target file name. And uh, another very common option that is used is the minus r option, uh, which basically does the copy in a recursive form. 
So, what we mean by recursive form is the two arguments of this particular command are basically the source directory and the target directory. So, whatever are the contents of this particular source directory that is mentioned here will be recursively copied into the target directory. So, let us say that there have been some direct uh, sub directories also available as part of the source directory, then those uh, directory sub directories also will be copied in a recursive manner uh, to the contents in the target directory. So, in that way I do not need to really run the cp command individually for every sub directory that is present in the source directory, but uh, with a single command and using the minus r option to this particular cp command I will be able to take the entire contents of the source directory onto the target directory. So, let us see a few examples of how this really works. So, if I have for example, a file called readme right, and I want to have it copied into another file uh, like this, I typically have this command called cp and uh, where I specify the source file which is basically readme and then this particular source file I am telling that has to be copied onto the target file with this name as readme dot copied right. Now, uh, when I basically say uh, try to list whether this particular file is available, uh, it shows me that it has been actually copied successfully and uh, I am able to list that uh, file also uh, here as part of the ls output. So, some of the other commands uh, that are also very commonly used with files is what is called as an mv and the rm command. So, the mv command uh, basically stands for move. Um, so, I will basically be giving again two arguments here one whatever is the existing name uh, source file name that is existing and uh, the second argument is basically what is the target file name to which I would want this file to be moved to right. So, if I say move uh, uh, the old file name followed by the new file name, the, the old file name will be renamed in the file system to be of that of the new file name whatever has been given as the target file name that is basically the second argument in the move command. So, similarly, if I use the minus i option like the minus i option that we had in the cp command uh, for every move of the old file name to the new file name. Uh, there will be an explicit confirmation that will be required from the user saying yes I want to move the uh, name from the old name to the new name without which uh, this uh, movement will not happen. So, the next command is basically what is called as an rm command. So, rm as the name is denoting it stands for removing. Uh, so, if I want to remove multiple files I could specify the multiple file names as individual arguments to the rm command uh, and if I have the necessary permissions. Uh, all the files that have been given as arguments to the rm command will be uh, removed from the file system. Again I we have the minus i option where before removing uh, the given file uh, if the minus i option has been specified in the command line these uh, uh, files uh, uh, will be removed only after the user explicitly confirms saying that yes uh, he wants the file to be removed. Then there is another option called minus r which sort of recursively removes the contents of a directory uh, and then removes the directory also. So, if I for example, say rm minus r uh, dir 1, dir 2, dir 3 right, uh, it will remove the contents of dir 1 first then contents of dir 2, contents of dir 3 recursively. So, here recursively what we mean is that if I have a sub directory inside dir 1 the contents of that sub directory will be first removed, then the contents of the dir1 will be removed and the dir1 entry itself will be removed right. So, uh, that is basically uh, some of the very commonly used options with mv and rm. So, coming to the uh, commands that are very commonly used for creating and removing directories, you have a mkdir command which basically stands for make directory and uh, I again give the arguments uh, uh, of the directory names which I would like to create with this command. So, if I say make dir, dir 1, dir 2, dir 3, uh, you will have three directories created with these names uh, assuming that we have enough permissions uh, available on the place where these directories are getting created. So, similarly, if I want to remove the directory, 
I specify RMDIR, it stands for remote directory and then give the arguments as the directory names which I would like to be remote, right. So, the only point to be noted here is that uh, when I am using the RMDIR command, uh, the command will expect that the given directories whatever has been given as the arguments uh, do not have any contents inside them. So, the contents uh, uh, no subdirectories, no files should be present inside the directories that has been given for RMDIR as arguments. Uh, if the contents are there, it will just report back an error message saying that uh, since there are contents inside and it is not empty, the RMDIR command has actually failed. So, let us see uh, basically how these commands are working. So, if I say cp uh, readme dot copied and readme 2. So, I am basically copying the file readme dot copy to readme 2 uh, and now I say move. What is going to happen is that the, the file name as readme dot copied will no longer be existing and uh, the name will actually be getting changed to readme 3. Now, if I try to find if I have this file name as readme dot copied, it reports back an error to me saying that no such file or directory. On the other hand, if I now look at to see if the readme 3 that is the name that I used as a target file name in my mv command is available, it says it is actually available as part of the ls output. right? Now, similarly, if I want to create a directory, uh, I use the mkdir command. and directory gets created, right. Now, if I say rmdir, this particular directory will be getting removed. It says again no such file or directory, right. So, uh, some of the very, very simple commands uh, that are uh, uh, very, very, very commonly used. Uh, uh, when you are dealing with uh, the Linux command line. So, if you want to display the contents of the file, uh, you have uh, the cat command. Um, it uh, basically tries to display the contents of the file, uh, how many ever files you have actually given as arguments to the cat command. And then you have the more and the less command, which also displays you the contents uh, of the given file names as arguments. Uh, but here, uh, it after displays, after displaying the first page of contents of the individual files, it waits for the user confirmation to continue. So, that uh, uh, it, it, it is a sort of an interactive mechanism by which the user after reading through the contents of the first page goes and presses a key to make it display the contents of the second page and so on. Right? Uh, so, that uh, essentially is more uh, user interactive wherein um, uh, if the, the command is basically getting a confirmation from the user by making him press any key uh, in the keyboard for it to go and display the contents of the second page and third page and so on one by one. Right? So, the more, or more and the less command is actually used uh, to display it uh, page by page and uh, you could also sort of search through uh, any kind of a string occurrence that you want in the output by using the slash and the question mark uh, uh, command. So, if I mention slash followed by a, a string name, it will try to display the lines where the content where that particular string is available in the entire output. And uh, the slash command will basically search for that string in the forward direction. So, from the current line or the page to the subsequent lines and pages going uh, forward, whereas the question mark will basically try to search for the same uh, content in the reverse backward direction. right? So, that is basically the difference between the slash and the question mark uh, command. Then the next set of commands that we typically make use of is uh, what is uh, called as a head and the tail command. So, if I basically say head uh, followed by the file name, by default it will display the first 10 lines of that particular file alone. And similarly, when I say tail, it will display the last 10 lines of that file which has been given as an argument. 
if I need to be getting uh, the contents of uh, anything other than the 10 lines, so let us say I want 25 lines to be displayed, I could always use the minus option to the head or the tail command appropriately and specify how many ever lines. So, if I say for example, tail minus 20 and give a file name, it will display the last 20 lines of the file. The same case holds true for the head command also. So, if I say head minus 15 and give it a file name as an argument, it will display the first 15 lines of the given file name which has been given as an argument. Now, uh, there is another very powerful option, uh, very useful option called as minus f to the tail command uh, which basically stands for uh, follow. Now, what this particular command actually does is, uh, apart from displaying the last 10 lines of the given file name at that point in time, it just does not come out immediately, but waits for the subsequent updates to the given file. Uh, as and when it happens, you will find that the tail minus f option, uh, the command output is also getting refreshed immediately. So, uh, this is very, very useful uh, whenever uh, somebody like a system administrator needs to keep track of the changes or the updates that would come in in a typical product log file, uh, wherein any kind of warning message, any kind of uh, error message that the product is actually trying to uh, update in its log file uh, with the tail minus f option, the user will be able to quickly uh, come to know uh, because the message that is actually getting updated from the product uh, should be uh, viewable uh, as part of the output of the tail minus f uh, uh, command very easily. We will be dealing with is the grep command. So, grep uh, basically will help us to search for a particular pattern in the uh, files. So, I specify the pattern as a first argument and then I specify the file or multiple files as a second argument, uh, wherein the existence of the pattern is checked in the given list of files and if they are found, it will display the lines in which those that particular pattern is present in each of those. Uh, files that has been given as an argument to the grep command, right. So, if you for example, say grep error star dot log, uh, you will find that the, the, the pattern error uh, is searched for in all the files that are ending with dot log. So, in one of the previous modules, uh, uh, we had a look at uh, the regular expression pattern for star uh, with uh, meaning it, it sort of replaces 0 or more characters in the file name substitution. So, any kind of a file name that is actually ending with dot log will be sort of taken up for searching for this particular pattern error. So, all the lines in which the, the pattern error is found in all the files ending with dot log will be displayed as output of this particular command. And when you use the minus i option, uh, it is sort of case insensitive wherein uh, if I give this pattern as error. So, if I have for example, uh, a word with the, the letter E in this error alone as capital case, right, upper case and the remaining is all in small letters, but whereas my pattern that I have given is all in small letters, because of the fact that we have actually used the minus i option, even that word will be actually getting recognized as the pattern, as a matched pattern and then that line also will be getting printed here, right. So, that is basically what we are referring to as the case insensitive option here, where the, the case will not be specifically checked, but the entire string uh, without being sensitive to the case of any of those letters or for the entire string will be searched for in the given list of file names and then the corresponding lines will be printed. Right. So, minus r again uh, like we saw in the cp command and the uh, uh, mv command, it stands for recursive. So, in the current directory, the dot represents current directory as we have seen before, all the files will actually be checked recursively for this particular pattern and also in a case insensitive manner because I have used the minus i option here also and then uh, those lines will be displayed. So, when I use the minus v option, uh, the, the behavior of grep uh, reverses in the sense that all the lines that does not have this pattern uh, will be getting displayed, right. So, but the default behavior is all the lines which contains this pattern should be displayed, but when I use minus v option, all the lines which does not contain this pattern uh, will be getting displayed. 
So, sort is a command uh, that is again used to sort the contents of the file and then display it uh, in the standard output. The contents of the file is not getting updated as part of the sort command. So, the contents of the file will only be getting sorted and then displayed out onto the terminal window, but the file contents itself will not become sorted inside the file. right? Now, sort minus r uh, does the reverse behavior. So, uh, instead of it being uh, done in an uh, uh, lexicographic order, here the reverse uh, behavior of the reverse lex lexicographic order will be done whenever I actually use the minus r option. So, minus u option is basically standing for unique, wherein uh, if it finds that two lines are consecutively exactly similar to each other, uh, then the output of those two lines will be sort of uh, uh, replaced by a single line in my output. right? So, uh, that is basically why this option called uh, is called as a unique wherein uh, uh, multiple lines, similar lines that are available will be getting replaced with the single line in the output as part of the sort. So, we will be actually seeing uh, uh, more combinations of how this uh, sort command is actually working in our subsequent uh, modules. Next command is basically the set command. Uh, uh, set is basically a, a stream editor. Uh, it basically tries to parse a text file uh, and implements a sort of a, a very uh, a simple programming language to sort of do any kind of transformation on the searched uh, text as well. right? So, if you for example, see this. So, I uh, basically saying set uh, s, s basically stands for a string search uh, slash abc slash def. So, it, it tells that if I basically try to find abc, that particular string abc has to be replaced with def. And uh, the second argument to that is basically the test file. Uh, this test file should be looked at and all patterns where the string abc is found will be replaced by the def uh, uh, string here as part of this uh, set command. right? Now, if I try to use this kind of regular expression pattern, uh, you will uh, observe that you have a symbol called as the caret symbol followed by the open square brackets and the closed square brackets in which two characters are present. So, one is a white space character and another is a slash t character. The slash t character stands for the tab character. And uh, what it essentially means is that uh, in the square brackets would mean that you have a matching of any one character that is actually mentioned within the square brackets and the closed square brackets followed by star. So, star as we saw before basically stands for 0 or more characters and this caret symbol is basically to denote that the beginning of the particular line. So, this entire regular expression pattern what it actually tries to do is if I find at the beginning of the line any number of white spaces or any number of tab characters, why is it any number? Because you have the star here. So, any number of white spaces or tab characters, why is it or because you have used these open square brackets and the closed square brackets, replace that with a blank line. right? That is why you do not see any character here. So, as you saw here in this example, def was given as a replacement string, whereas in this particular case uh, as an argument to the set, I am not giving anything. Uh, so, essentially it means that you do not need to replace it with anything, but just replace it with a, a blank space at that particular uh, uh, position, wherever you find the pattern matching this. right? So, that is basically what this uh, uh, particular uh, set command option is actually trying to do. So, we will see subsequently the different type of regular expressions in our next set of modules.